Hi everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to part three of our BMW B Max E30 M3 Jägermeister build. So we're going to get the car finished today. Um, last time you saw it, we 2K'd it all ready to go. We had all the running gear gone. Today we're going to concentrate on the interior. We're going to polish up that body, get rid of that hair and the boot lid, get it all assembled and get it built. Now we've got a lot of footage to get through. I've got about four hours of footage to edit uh, down to a 30 minute video, which takes quite some doing. Um, so we're not going to dilly dally round. Um, we're going to get through it quick. So anything I don't elaborate on, the skip through, you can go back to the Subaru build to refer to. So like the seat belts, the full polishing compound of the body, you can go and have a look. I show bits and bobs here as I've gone through the build, but we're not going to stick around with, unless it's a new technique. So with the body, we're going to flat dry it with micro mesh. We're then going to use some of the splash compounds, which are these. To try, I've not used them yet, so it'll be interesting to see how they. Go today. We've also got some new Sega to try. We've got some of that Bob Smith's odorless stuff and keeps raving about. Um, so we'll see how that stuff goes as well. Um, yeah, and that's it. So, like I said, we're not going to hang around. We're going to really get through this. So, some bits are sped up a little bit. You know, we get through it quick. Understand why. There's a lot of footage to get through. And I want to keep this to three parts. Didn't It didn't warrant four. Um, so, that's that. So, let's crack on. Let's go straight to the interior and crack on building that. Okay, so wrong with our interior today, we've got various parts to go in place. Uh, kit parts, we've got some aftermarket parts to put in as well from the detail upset. Include the clips around the fire extinguisher, the footrest. Um, some parts we're not going to include, we're going to keep it the kit parts. And I've painted a lot of these off camera. There's our chassis and roll cage, painted in the Zero Jägermeister Orange, as per last time. We've got the door cards, painted in um, Mr. Colour Semi-Gloss Black. Dashboard, painted in UMP Primer. The front grille, Semi-Gloss Black. The seat was primed in grey primer and then painted in the zero paint texture paint to give that rough look. The back hasn't been painted. Uh, we're going to decal this up with the scale motorsport yellow composite decal film, which I'll show a little bit later on. But that texture paint gives a nice texture to the seat to give it that kind of fabric look. There's the film we're going to use. I love that stuff. Settles well, responds to decal solutions, fantastic. And lays down nice and flat. All the other components are on there, steering wheel, gear selector, so on and so forth. We're going to detail paint some of the dashboard in a little bit. And then glue everything in place. We've got the seat belts to make. The decal films put on the back of the seat as well. And we'll move on to get the door cards detail painted. Getting everything installed in the interior tub. And then we can make our seat belts. And then we can attach the tub to the chassis now any part that i'm covering depth you can go back to the subaru build and have a look at the seat belts uh, so on and so forth so if you want to go a little bit more in depth just go back to the subaru build and it should cover so we're starting off by detail painting some parts of the dashboard using the kit instructions and my re uh, reference book as reference as well just going to detail paint of some of the vents some of the panels in vallejo black and this just add a little bit of visual interest to the model as we go. So some careful hand painting using a um, Series 7 Winsor Newton brush. The flow black has been thinned with a drop of water. And like I say, just a little bit of careful painting. We can get this painted off really quickly. You can mask it if you wanted. It's a bit tricky to do and very time consuming for the amount of paint that's actually going down. And I'll be honest, I think brush painting it is just as good a way to go. So trick is not too much paint. Have it thinned properly, hence the drop of water, which makes a world of difference with a little model colour. And just take your time. There's references to follow. You've got the heat events, uh, console panels to follow around. And once it's done, it'll add a bit of interest and we can add a wash later on. So now we're on to our door cards. We've got some Vallejo grey. Um, the grey itself was actually uh, Mr. Mister. It was model colour neutral grey, which is 70992. And we're just using a flat brush from Tamiya. And getting our first coat down. Again, the key to brush painting is don't try and get it all in one coat. Multiple coats is the key. So get your most of your colour down with the first coat. Follow all the definition of the panel. And then come back and add your subsequent coats later on. Like I say, don't try and get it all down in one go. Just end up with lumpy, horrible looking paint. If you take your time. And again, a little drop of water in there to thin it. It'll lay down nice and smooth. Um, the model colour is a fantastic brush paint. Um, I've had the this stuff for years these bottles are like eight years old they're still as good as new and as you can see after about four coats they cover really well and it gives us a nice definition between the black and the gray
Try not to go over the parts too many times. Uh, we're a little bit off camera, do apologise. The thing with this is, uh, I'm, I'm filming this as I'm muddling away. This camera's left to run for hours on end, and I troll through looking for the footage I need. And sadly, sometimes I'm not always concentrating on the camera. I'm concentrating on what I'm doing, and it does go off screen a little bit. Yes, people have said put an X on the bench. It doesn't work because I've got instructions on the bench. I've got tools everywhere, and it soon gets covered up. Uh, plus the little cutting mat I use for gluing moves around, so the mark doesn't always work. So most of the time I'm in shot, every now and then I'll go out, but I'm only brush painting. What we're doing now, we're getting a cot cotton bud from Tamiya, one of the pointed ones, just to remove a little bit of the excess paint. If you get it quick before it dries, you can wipe it off very quickly. And if not, a little bit of pressure, it'll often come off too. So we're going to detail paint up the fire extinguisher. That's been sprayed in C3 Red. And we're just spraying up the hose uh, end itself, the nozzle, with some mithril silver. Same with the, I believe it's the ECU in the car. Uh, just add a little bit of detail paint to that. And the selector, you know what, I actually don't even know what this is. It's in front of the gear lever, if you know, let me know, I'm being ignorant there, I don't know. Uh, but we're just detail painting up some of the knobs and switches and that in some silver. And now we'll pop an RP on our fire extinguisher. This is including a detail upset. Again, we're off camera a little bit, I do apologise. I've tried to source as much footage as I can. But we'll put a little dab of sea glue on the top. We're holding it with one finger, using our tweezers to bring it round. Slot it through the little hole. And then we're going to grab it, pull it through, and bend it back. Nice little bit of PE to include in a detail upset. Does look really good. Uh, there are no built-in straps to the fire extinguisher. Like you get the likes of Tamiya or whatnot. So, it's a worthy addition uh, like I said, I've not used all the detail upset. I've picked and choose what I wanted to use, but I think this little part is handy. Sadly, I did lose the one that's there now on my tweezers. Uh, in a moment, it just vanishes into thin air. I spend the next half an hour looking for it. So there you go, it's gone. I've no idea where that's gone now. I could never find it again. And luckily, I had a spare one out of an old set. So just be aware of the PE as you're doing it. So we detail painted the footrest. We'll pop the PE in place. We're now going to drill some holes through for our fire extinguisher. This is my little battery powered drill everybody asked me about, the micro detailer. I believe Micromark sold these years ago. It's a little battery powered, very low powered drill, uh, but they're no longer in production. I've shown it because I would know for a fact 20 people will ask me what little drill is that. It has no power to it whatsoever. You can stop it with your finger, but it's just enough power to drill through plastic, and it does a great job. I've had it for years. And it's a handy little tool. So there goes our fire extinguisher in place. Looks the part with the added photo etch. Like I said, we've had the photo etch foot footrest as well. And we're just applying a little bit of CA glue underneath to hold it all in place. So a little dab of CA glue in the bottom of our gear selector. That's then popped in place. There we go. We're in. And then I think this is ECU. Again, glued in place. So a little bit of details of some of these parts, not necessarily how they should be. Now, this part, if anyone knows what that is, please let me know because I'm being ignorant here. Uh, the M3 is one of my favorite cars, but I'll be honest, I have no idea what that part is. So we've got some Tamiya panel line wash, just applying it to the silver parts we painted earlier and the photo etch. And we'll just go around and wash to all the parts, giving a little bit of depth and adding a bit of detail. We're then coming back in with the grey panel line wash over our black parts. Again, just add a little bit of detail and a bit of depth. You could go the full hog with this thing and wire it up, hose it up, etc. And then pop in a little bit on the black part of our dashboard too. How far you want to go with these is up to you. I've super detailed before. Didn't really enjoy it, so I'm happy building a semi out of the box. And then finally, a bit of a wash around the grey parts of our door card. Great thing about the wash, if you have got a little bit of paint that's gone over the sides or a little bit further than should, the wash will often tie it together. Now, onto our carbon composite scale motorsport carbon film. This is 1324, it's a yellow carbon composite. What we've done, we've cut our two L shapes. And what we're going to do is decal the side of the C first. We're going to do it in three parts, just like we always do with the kit decals when we cut them into threes. So we're gonna do one side, then the other, then we'll use a sharp knife and completely clear the center section so it's a nice clean strip. And then we'll add a nice strip to the center later on. And that should hopefully give us a nice clean look. 
and uh, it should look the part. It normally does. It's a great decal film. Just put a bit of micro set down, so, uh, micro scale. That help us set the decal in place. Again, as you see, the L shape is done for a reason. It will cover most of the care, uh, seat. Just going to get it in place where we want it. Make sure we're all fully covered where we want the decal to be. Just easing it around. Pop it in place. And we'll grab our brush. And start getting some microsol down. Now, the tip of this is get some microsol on there. Don't use solver set until you want it really set in place. And just put it on the surface. There's no point trying to force it in place yet. It takes a couple of minutes for the microsol to work. So pop it on. Put it down, let it sit for a minute, and just leave it be. As the microsoft starts to work, it'll start to soften the decal, and then we can start to work in place. So pop some on, put it down on the bench for a bit, and let it sit. I'm just making sure, because I dropped it, that we are back in place where we want it. Just make sure it's got a nice even coverage all over it, and then leave it alone for five or ten minutes. While the microsol is doing its work, I've grabbed my Tamiya decal scissors and I'm just going to remove any excess decal film from around the front of the seat. Um, this is only getting in the way and we don't want to start conforming around the front and also trimming it to kind of fit will help it conform in place as well because you've got less of the decal swinging around in the breeze. These scissors are fantastic, nice and sharp and they cut the decals absolutely perfectly. And as you can see, the sole's starting to work. It's starting to conform to the shape of the seat. There's plenty of ridges on the seat to conform to. And as you can see, after about 10 minutes of the solution sitting in place, it started to conform nicely around the seat. Now what we've got here, we've got a brand new fresh blade in our Tamiya knife. And we're very carefully cutting away at the edge of the seat, following the contours of the seat. So we're just slicing away very slowly. If you're not confident in this, let it dry. But the longer you let it dry, the harder it is to remove from the seat. So I just slice away a little bit and then drag it away with the knife. Like I said, I've done this dozens of times, so I've found my way of doing it that I'm comfortable. But you can see the contours of the seat are plainly visible. So if you just nick along with the knife, nice and gentle. As you can see, the decal does still move, so it's not going to slice perfectly. If it does move, grab your pen, water brush pen, and just pop it back in place. Now, I do this for speed because I'd like rather get off now where it's wet. Just making sure we're all still in place further up. As you can see, we've got a little bit of a tear there. But I'll show you how to rectify that in a minute. You see the white primer, well, plastic of the seat has shown through. So again, we're just going to carefully slice and then drag away the decal from the edge. You can say if it moves, don't worry, you can push it back in. But if you're not confident in doing this while it's still wet, let it dry. And it's a case of trying to get the decal off the seat. Like I say, I'm confident what I'm doing. I've just got the edge away. Should do that now. We can remove the excess and get back to popping it all in place. So there we go, we've got all the excess off. Now what we've done now, we've cut a tiny little triangle of decal. And we're going to pop that over the gap, as you can see. And we're going to hit it with some decal solutions, let it set, and once we're happy, we can leave it be, and you will not even notice it when it's all dried. So just putting a bit of decal solution down, grabbing a little bit of decal, put it right up to the edge. Once we're happy, we can leave it alone, let that set for a bit, and then come back at the end, hit it with some solver set, and it will all mould nicely together. Now it is tricky getting smaller parts on. They do like to stick to the tweezers. So wet the surface enough that it holds it. Move the decal in place. Once you're happy where it is, hit it with some of the decal solution. And then leave it well alone. So once I've done one side, I usually put this aside for a good hour. And let it set. Because there's nothing worse than start working on the other side. And then you put your fingers in this side. Moving everything around and making an absolute mess of it. So I'm just getting this in the final position where I'm happy. And then we'll leave that alone and come back. So I'm going to do the side off camera because it's exactly the same as this. And we'll come back and do the centre section in a little bit. But as you can see, even now you can't really see the tear where it was. And once the decal solution moulds it all in place, you won't even notice where it is. 
And final room around the decals, make sure it's all in place before we leave it alone. And there we go. So both sides are now done. We're hitting these up with micro, uh, Walther's solver set. I do beg your pardon. And this will then really set them in place. We'll then leave them alone for a good half hour or so before we come back and start putting our center section in. As you can see, we've cut the center section square now. So we ran the knife down the back once it was dry to square them up. And we're going to get a strip of the decal film and pop it in place in the center. Okay, the sides of the seats have been drying for a good half hour or so. We've got our little strip of film for the center. You see, it goes below the bottom of the seat and above the console of the seat as well. Again, we'll get it all set in place, then we'll trim it to fit. Uh, because we've got the vertical lines, that are less easy to notice, and it'll blend in a lot easier than having horizontal or diagonal lines. It just seems to fit in, seems to fool the eye a bit more, I think. And again, we'll hit it with a microsol. Again, we'll let it sit for a bit. We'll then work it into all the grooves and contours, trim it, and then hit it with our solver set. So you can see this has now been set in for a bit, and you can really see it contouring round. Really nice, and all the edges are blended in now and everything, so it's really starting to look well. Like I say, let the decal solutions work for you. Um, don't try and rush them. If you rush them, all you will do is tear the carbon. I've used this stuff so much, I really enjoy using it now. And uh, The more you use it, the more you get to know just how much you can push it. So what we're doing now, we're trimming the top to shape. We also put a slit into the harness holes at the top as well. And again, we're just allowing the decal solution to soften those before we push them through in place. And then we can leave it be to set. And once we're happy, hit it with some Walther solver set, which will really set it in place. And that's it. Job done. Perfect. Um, it does take some time. It's not something you'll be constantly working on. So I tend to decal a piece, put it to one side, work on something else, and keep coming back. But there's probably a couple of hours work in this. Not constant, but with waiting around, etc. But as you can see, it's conformed absolutely beautifully to the seat. And it really does look well. Absolutely lovely. So very happy with that. This is after it's dried now, after a couple of hours. So we start to handle the seats. You can see we've got a little bit of paint we've missed off the top. So that'll need a little bit of a touch-up. So, harnesses. Now, the detail set harnesses I'm not a fan of. So I'm using my Studio 27 set that I showed in the Subaru build. So if you want to have a look at that, go on over to that and I show fully how to make these harnesses. But in this case, we're going to skip through fairly quick. We've got a lot to get through. Uh, and just show very quickly cutting some components off um, now funny enough there we go all done <laughs> so skip right through uh, like i say if you want to see it in depth go to the subaru build it's in one of the parts there's a whole part dedicated to this and i show building these harnesses in full uh, the subaru build can be found further back on the channel it's a 10 part series i believe i think it was 10 parts um covering the step-by-step -step build so if you want to see anything in more depth Go over there and have a look. But um, the Studio 27 belt set with my own ribbon works fantastic. Um, the detail up set it uses thinner belt. I'm not too keen on the photo etch. Um, I don't think it looks as good. So here we go. The seat's in. Roll cage is in. We've attached the harnesses to the back part of the partial shelf as well. So that's all in place. And now we're going to start masking the windows. Again, we're going to cover this not in depth. But if you want to see it, go to the Subaru build. And it's all there. Like I say, these builds are more documents in the build of the BMW and not the techniques involved. The biggest tip I can get, give on the glass is to be careful cutting them off the sprue. Take your time and have a nice soft cotton cloth to hand to polish up the parts. Keep them clean. Keep fingerprints off them. Keep thinners off. Keep masking tapes off. Don't put blue tack or white tack onto the clear plastic as I found it does mark it. And when you're masking them, these masking sets are absolutely invaluable. They're pre-cut to shape. You just got to line them up properly. If you're not happy, take it back off and reapply it. I did that several times with this one to get it in place. And they save so much time and hassle. And they often only cost a couple of pounds. So well worth doing. Once you're happy it's all in place, burnish the edges with a cotton bud nice and light. Some of these go on the inside. Some of these go on the outside. The side windows are masked from the outside. The um, front and rear are masked from the inside. So bear that in mind. We've used our clear... Tamiya paints, yellow and orange on the rear lights, brush painted on. And now we're going to go around them with the Edding black marker to give the impression of the black rubbers. Front indicator is exactly the same. 
adds a bit of depth to the indicators once we're in. And now we're going to take back the body. So we've got some 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, and 12,000 micromesh. We're going to deal with that really annoying hair on our boot lid. This is going to take quite a bit of work. So we're starting off with the 4,000. Again, use wet and very light finger pressure. We're just running it over the hair. Now the hair is raised, so you will see it vanish before your eyes. Not necessarily in the video, but when you're doing it, because obviously you need the light angles. So we're just very lightly taking back the entire panel, working panel by panel. This is the only panel we'll need to do this to. There's nothing else bad anywhere on the body that needs this kind of work. So we're just taking our time. Be aware of your edges. Be aware of any raised parts because if you're not careful, especially with 4,000, in hindsight, I'd have probably used six, um, but I thought four would be a quicker way of dealing with it. And just by going over the four, 90% of the hair is now gone, and we're just left with a little bit of orange peel where the paint's raised above it and collected. So now we're on with our 6,000 micro mesh. And what we're doing, we're going to slowly work out all the scratches through the grades until we get to polish. Now, one thing we were discussing when we were doing the uh, Splash 2K was how good it's going to look. Now, what I found is for doing work like this, it's a little bit too thin. Um, and I found on the side of the car, uh, on the wheel arches, I burned through quite easy just with the micro mesh, and that was only 12,000 grit. Um, so for me, I prefer my old 2K, the Pro Range. The Splash 2K is fantastic. I'll talk about this a little bit more in depth in a little bit. But when you need to work on it like this, I don't think it's thick enough to give you the material to work with. Now, whether you could apply another coat, I don't know. Splash, do you recommend up to five coats? I can't see how you could put five coats on. I think it's too thin. Um, but yeah, for me, I prefer my old Pro Range. I prefer the way I've been doing it before. I also tried the Splash Compounds, and I prefer my Novus that I've been using. I think it's just a thing. Once you find something you're comfortable using, it's hard to find a more superior product sometimes. So yes, for me, I'll be sticking with my Pro Range 2K for cars, and I'll be sticking with my Novus polish for um, the cars as well. Now, what I think I'll use the Splash 2K on is bikes. The bikes. I seem to think because they're smaller parts, they're easier to work on. They often don't need as aggressive uh, a sanding as the cars. Uh, there's not as many contours or recesses. So for me, maybe I'll try it on a bike next time. But for cars, for me, for the foreseeable future, I'll be using my Pro Range 2K. Um, as you see, we've worked up all the way up now. I think we've got to 12,000. As you can see, catching the light, uh, that hair is gone. I can't feel anything under the finger at all. So that is now gone. Sadly, though, using the um, wet and dry has now left a dull surface. So we need to polish this out. Now, I did start using the splash compounds. I wasn't that impressed by them. So I did go back to my Novus. And I got a better result. Again, whether it's because it's a product I know how to use and I'm comfortable with, I don't know. Um, but I just felt more comfortable using the Novus and thought I got a better result too. So we've got the splash uh, coarse compound here. Again, we're wetting our cotton cloth, grabbing a little dab of it, popping it in place. What I didn't try though, I didn't try the splash on any bodywork that hadn't been sanded. So maybe I'll give it another test later on. Maybe we'll do a separate review of it and see how it compares. Uh, but in this, this instance, I much preferred using the Novus um, on the body. Like I said, maybe we'll come back and give it a bit more of a fairer test. That's the thing. When you start changing too many variables, you lose track of what's making the difference, what's working and what's not working. And obviously, we change paint, 2K, and compounds here all together. And I think those kind of variables can give you um, not false results, but kind of hidden results. So you think something's not as good. When in reality, it probably is. So that's the coarse compound on. Uh, we're then going to grab another clean cloth and remove that. Have a look what we've got. And then we'll work through the fine and the finish until we get what we get at the end. Like I say, we'll come back at a later date. Maybe to give these a bit more of a fairer test and uh, see what we think of them then. But I wasn't that impressed here. And uh, For the rest of the body, I did use my Novus. Okay, so this is after going through all three compounds of the splash. 
It looks okay. It's about on par with the roof, which is still just as it was out the airbrush. But for me, I prefer my Novus. Whether I'm biased because I've used it many times, like I say, we'll definitely come back and give this a separate test and give it a more fair review. So now we're onto the side of the body. Um, I'm going over this now with 12,000 wet and dry, the way I always do. We just flatten it off ever so slightly. It was a really good finish out the gun. Uh, we did get some what looked like slight orange peel after the 2K had dried. So it wasn't as flawless a finish as we had out the gun. And I did say that during the review. We'll know once it's dried and see how it flats. Um, for me, like I said, I think I prefer my Pro Range. It goes on a little bit thicker. Um, and whilst it might not look as impressive straight out the airbrush... Once I've worked it like this, with the wet and dry and the Novus compounds, I think it looks great. But once this is all done, polished up, there's a fairly good shine there. It certainly looks good. Um, the Jägermeister Orange is lovely. Sadly, we did burn through, through some parts on the body, but that's just the way it is. Spoiler's all done as well, and we did drill out the holes a little bit wider with a pin vise to ensure that they fitted in properly. Um... So, yeah, the interior is all done. That's ready to go. Running gear is all done as well. We did that in the subsequent parts. And we've got our glass work to now put in place as well. So this has all been painted up. We've painted up um, the glass with um, UMP black primer, as you can see. And the window wiper has been done as well. So when you mask up, when you put any part on to hold like I've done, Put the white tack or blue tack onto the masked area, not onto the glass, because I have found it leaves residue and does mark it. Um, so a little tip there. Now, there's always a part of the mask that hasn't quite gone down as well as the others, and that's the part to look for now. So grab with the edge of a knife. Don't touch the glass. Just grab the paper, grab a pair of tweezers, and we can ease it back. Uh, we've now got some um, Vallejo Black again. We're going to add a drop of water again as well. What we're going to do now is we're going to paint the visible parts of the um, door frames, uh, B-pillar, etc. Because some of it can be seen through the uh, glass. Now, you don't want to see the bodywork. We want it to look like the door cards. So we're going to paint it black. So we're just going to mix a little bit of water with the black paint. Grab our flat brush again. Make sure it's clean, which it is. Give a little bit of a mix. And then put a very light coat on the interior parts. You don't have to go mad. It's only where you can see when you put the glass in, which you'll see by dry fitting it. But it's basically along the top of the doors, like so. And all the B pillar. And again, be careful with the painting. Don't try and get it one go as usual. Come back again later on when it's dried in a couple of minutes and get a second coat on. And all this will do, once the glass is in place, when you look down into the body, you don't see the bright orange. You'll just see black and it'll look part of the interior. So another little um, step worth doing. Just to make it look better. So what we've done now, where we painted the B-pillar, we just scratched off a little bit of the paint. And that's where we're going to put a little bit of CA glue. And then we're going to dab some CA glue around the edges um, to hold the glass in place. Just wiping off a little bit of excess paint there, which we got rid of. Fantastic. Once we have all the black works clean and we're ready for the glass, um, we're going to glue it in place. Now I've got some of the Bob Smith odorless CA glue. Again, first time using this, and I'm not all that impressed. It, it takes a lot longer to glue. Um, obviously, it doesn't fog, which is handy because we did get a streak of it on the glass. More of that in a little bit. Um, but I didn't find it grabbed or you know got the purchase it needed on parts like this that need glued in place fairly quick, quickly. Otherwise, you've got to sit there and hold them for ages um so again something that changed it's got its uses on lights and that it's going to be fantastic uh we don't always have to use the aquilos twick trick uh, but with this it had to be held in place to get it to glue properly as you see it's popping out the front so not all that impressed um again sticking with what you know is often best that was our toe and eye that's in place the photo etch one uh these are our last few decals front and rear uh sponsorship sun visor and the side um gardener nameplate as well there in place we've got our Irvine for our suspension so that was drilled out with a one mil hole dab of CA glue and then popped in place we're then putting our rear light lenses in 
So again, they push fit in very tightly, and I was just applying a little dab of CA glue over the top to hold them nicely in place. And then grabbing our white lens as we did earlier, and using a little bit of that odorless CA glue, we popped them in place, and they look great. We are speeding through here. We've got a lot to get through. Uh, we've got the front grille. We're putting the rear light lenses on now. So again, a little bit of that odorless glue. Popping it in place. Although you don't really need it on the lens. Once you put the uh, the reflector, once you put the lens in, you do. And again, we use the odorless glue on the lenses. And I think I prefer my Aquagloss trick I showed in the Subaru build. Once we push the iconic grille in, uh, the whole grille then slots just in front of the car. Just pushes in place. And there we go, all done. So, for the most part, it looks good. Uh, the 2K is not bad at all. Uh, I've done better, though, and I've had less flaws before. Uh, we'll discuss it in depth in a minute when we go back to me. Um, the colour was good, the splash paints were good. Uh, a little bit translucent, in my opinion. Need a lot more paint than I thought. The 2K laid down well, um, but I think I could have got a much better result doing things my way, uh, the older way I used to do it. Um wheels are a worthy addition they look absolutely fantastic i've got some still shots we can have a look at like i say, the wheels absolutely lovely well worth addition to the build and um, the seat again lovely seat inside absolutely fantastic the detail upset although we didn't use all of it again a very worthy addition um and it looks good on the whole it looks good for me there's one too many faults um we didn't quite finish it we didn't do the door handles or paint the antenna um, but i will discuss that in a minute as to why right well there we go there's the car finished um as you can see i'm not all that happy with it um so much so i've ordered a new set of decals and a new part of zero paint so let's go for zero jägermeister orange because the splash paint isn't in stock and uh, we're going to completely redo the body the rest of the car warrant it it's got a bit of money in the wheels and the interior and i want to finish it off properly there's a lot of flaws in the body i'm not happy with which i'll talk about in a second but I think the problem here is it's changing too many variables. We changed the base colour, um, the splash paints, whilst they look great and they spray fantastic, I think that orange was too thin. It was too translucent to paint, hence why I needed so much paint to cover. If I look into door shuts and panel lines, I can see where the paint's not quite covered the primer, whereas other paints I use, I have no drama with at all. So I think it, that was a, it's a problem with that particular colour. That's my personal belief. Whether it is or not, I don't know, um, but that's where I think. A little bit too thin. Um, Samuel S. Uh, Splash did assure me that if I sprayed the 30 psi, it would cover a lot better. I don't think it would personally, but that's my own personal belief. The paints look great. I know other people have used them. The colours look fantastic, and we'll be using them on subsequent builds without a shadow of a doubt. And I'll be buying more as well. Um, Samuel did very kindly offer to send me another bottle of the Jägermeister Orange, so maybe we'll test that at a later date. I've got other Jägermeister schemes to do, and we'll see how it performs. The 2K. That laid down absolutely fantastic. It really did spray lovely. It covered well. It self-leveled really, really well. And I couldn't fault the way it sprayed. And like I said in the review, the proof of it is how it performs today. So today we've got to flat it, we've got to polish it, and then we're really going to see how it goes. Now, sadly, um, we did burn through some areas of paint. And that's purely down to me, not being used to how thin the 2K is. So... We burned through wheel arches, the edge of the bonnet, um, a couple of other points as well, which is a bit of a nightmare. I've never burned through so much paint ever before. Uh, and that's purely and simply because the 2K is so thin. So could I get around that? Probably with use. Uh, but for me, I'll be sticking with my Pro Range 2K. It goes down a little bit thicker. I've got a little bit more to work with because I do flat and polish them. So you do need a little bit of meat on there to work with. Um, I think I'll save the Splash 2K for the likes of car bodies or carbon bits and it needs a nice you know thin film of 2k without looking too much uh, there's nothing wrong with the product it's just me and the way i do things like i say it didn't dry as crystal clear as it looked um, when we first had it after 12 hours we did get a bit of orange peel a little bit of imperfections in there as well which is probably down to my spraying technique um, but like i say for me i'm going to stick with what i know and I'll carry on using my Pro Range 2K for the future. The compounds, again, we changed too many variables. We changed paint, we changed 2K, and we changed our compounds as well. Uh, again, all these variables then add to not knowing what's working and what's not working. So I wasn't keen on the splash compounds in the video, 
but to give them a fair review i think we'll come back and do a separate review of these on their own so a bit more controlled we'll do the 2k i'm used to the paint i'm used to probably spray up another body to do it as well and give it a proper fair test but for me the novus is fantastic we use for quite some time now it's faultless it works well uh, but i want to give the splash ones a fair review. i don't want to say they're no good because that's not right uh, but what the splash will be is essentially full-size car compounds in smaller tubs so again it might be a case of not using the coarse one just using the fine and the finish but we'll find out we will come back and give those a review at a later date and the ca glue <laughs> um works great on lights to stop the fogging i think i prefer my gloss technique like i say in the video what was more annoying than anything is gluing one of the side windows in because it didn't instantly grab it like ca glue normally does it fell out it then fell out down the side of the car and left a streak of ca down the side of the car which I then had to flat and polish out again. And uh, yeah, wasn't too impressed by that either. The air was a little bit blue. And by the end of all this, um, just little imperfections started to show through, probably because I was getting annoyed and straight in my mind was, I'm going to get a new body. So we didn't completely finish the car. Some small little bits were left. The door handles, I've not painted. The antenna wasn't done. I'm going to redo it. So some parts will come off the car and be reused others we're getting a whole new body new bonnet new bumpers new glasswork so on and so forth i've got four of these kits in the stash so i'll i'll use one of those um <clears throat> it's a shame but it's just how it is it's how modeling works to you guys out there in the pitches it looks great i could pass that off as a good piece of work me i'm not happy with it and i think it warrants that little bit of extra um work and i will redo it definitely it's a good looking scheme from my favorite cars from my favorite kits and I think I want to really do it justice. So whilst it looks good from a distance, for me, close up, I'm not very happy with it. So we are going to redo the body. So in a later bench update, I'll show it all finished. Uh, but you've seen some pictures of it there. It looks okay. It generally does. Uh, but I think I can do better. And I won't be happy until I do that. So that's what we're going to do. So like I said, I think changing a lot of things has kind of made me think, oh, that doesn't work. Or maybe it does. Um, like I said, the Splash 2K I'll say for bikes. I think they'll work well on bikes. It's nice for carbon and the bike fairings where you've got the nice smooth surface rather than contours and what have you all over the car bodies. The compounds will give a fair review. The Bob Smith, we'll see. I'll play that by ear. Um, but I think once you get settled into doing something to change it, uh, it has to be good to work and you've got to be comfortable in using it as well. And sadly, changing too many things... I said too many variables, and yeah, we've ended up with hmm, something I'm not happy with. So there we go. That's my honest thoughts. And like I say, we will come back, um, and I'll show the body properly finished to a point I'm happy with. Um, sadly, it's got too many flaws on it, and I'm just not happy leaving it be. Uh, on the whole, it looks good. Uh, it's a beautiful car, beautiful scheme. Uh, the 2K it is lovely. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful finish. Don't get me wrong, but for me, there's too many imperfections in it. Uh, as I did say to the guys yesterday I was talking to, you know, it's going to live in a display case. Uh, I'll probably never see it again. But for me, I'd rather do it justice and do it properly. So there we go. So there's my build. Uh, my honest thoughts and opinions. Obviously, if you've got them as well, let me know what you think. Pop them in the chat down below. Um, if you've used them, let me know. Let me know your thoughts. But yeah, I think... I think the darker colours uh, be interesting to use in the splash. We will use them at some point. I've got loads of road cars I've bought lately to use them in. We've got some of the motorsport colours there for the Corvette, <coughs> so on and so forth. They're on the rack there. I'm just looking at them. So we will come back and have a look. But I think that the orange was too thin. I think that was the problem with it. Um, and yeah, there we are. So there we go. That's the build. If you like the build series, let me know. Um... If you've got any comments or anything you want to ask, don't make it we do a bike build. <laughs> but that's about four million times. Never say never, but for now, we're sticking with cars. Um, but if you've got any comments, criticisms, suggestions, whatever, please let me know. I can still got my Christmas decks up now as well. Merry Christmas. Um, and yeah, we will be back with another build series, which I'll announce in my next bench update. Um, yes. There we go, I'm not mentioning it now, but we'll mention it in the next bench update. So there we go, thanks for watching today. My voice is starting to go because I've been doing voiceovers all morning and my throat is killing me. Um, so as always, check out ISM Facebook page and forum. Check out the Modeling Hangout group, the Live of the Bench Hangout group. Um, 
Paul ISM Facebook page, all my work goes on there, umpretail.com, check out modelemporium.shop, very, very kind of surprise the kit, check out uh, premiumhobbies.co.uk, uh, Ed, very kind of supplied the splash paints, the 2K, the compounds, etc. Thank you very much, guys. All the links are in the description down below. And like I said, if there's any techniques you're not sure on that I've shown in the video, go back to the Subaru blog because you'll probably find them on there. They're all sectioned into separate bits, and you're more than likely find what you're looking for there. So there we go. Bit disappointed in the build, but it still looks good, and hopefully I've made an interesting video for you guys and girls out there. Like I say, we will come back. I will get to the point I'm happy with and um, I'll show it in a subsequent bench update. So there we go. Make sure you stick around for the next bench update where I'll hopefully I'll start building the plane and I will announce the next video build as well. And I'll see you then. So take care, everyone. Bye-bye.